over from here. And uh, I hope you enjoy. Thank you. That's good, mate. Can, uh, can everyone hear me? Anyone give me a thumbs up that's on camera? Hey, there we go, technology. All right, well, uh, thanks, Nick, for the nice introduction. And, um, and thanks, everyone, for attending. And obviously, uh, thanks to ReadyTech for uh, organizing these sessions. We've been involved in a, a couple of these sessions over the last few weeks, and uh, it's really great to connect with people while we were all going through this uh, strange period of work that we're uh, having to get used to, this new normal. Um, so um, today, on, the, on behalf of Cloud Assess, Cloud Assess as, as Nick says, there's myself, um, the founder and managing director of Cloud Assess, and I'll, I'll give a bit more context about us in a second. And we've also got Alex, who's uh, doing a magic job so far of working the slides. There he is. Hi, Al. Um, great job of uh, working the slides, and, uh, and Al's going to show us a, a bit of the magic in terms of the uh, solution. Uh, if you can just hit the next couple of slides, please, Al. On to the next one again. Thank you. Um, yeah, so really, we, we've got half an hour today, and, and we're a couple of minutes in already. It's a very big subject, um, you know, to, to give you guys a, a bit of background on who we are and what we're about, and to help you understand the value of the product and see some of the product, see the integration, and, and kind of discuss how we can get you online quickly. It's a very lot to absorb today, so we're going to try and keep it at a reasonably high level and not get too buried in detail. Um, please feel free to ask any questions as we're going along. Um, we'll try and catch those in chat either as we're going, if that's relevant, or we'll try and pick them up. We've got a Q&A space at the, time, at the end. Hopefully we're gonna have five minutes or so if we've uh, got some time to, to answer as many questions as we can. Understand there might be a few come up with this subject uh, with how much of a kind of hot topic it is at the moment. Um, failing that, um, you know, really this is kind of to give you an idea of what we're about and, and give you that high level understanding. Um, if you really see relevance, we can obviously organize one-to-one -one sessions or trials or demos or what have you. So, so uh, don't worry about getting too much into the detail if, uh, if we're going to uh, kind of get buried in detail. So I'll try and keep things moving and, uh, and start with giving you a bit of context on Cloud Assess and what we're about. Next slide, Al. Okay, so Cloud Assess, we're a, we're a training and assessment um, management system. And we prefer to use that term rather than a learning management system is because we created Cloud Assess for the vet sector. So um, with that, we kind of, rather than talk about learning management, which tends to be the, the kind of higher ed focus of systems, we really focus on providing a platform for training and assessment. Um, and because we're dedicated to the vet space, um, we've always really focused on, on that, uh, that vet requirement and the AQF and, and all that good sort of stuff. Um, we've got firm roots in the vet sector. Um, we created Cloud Assess. Uh, we initially developed Cloud Assess when I had an RTO back in 2012. Uh, and when we showed the solution to other RTOs and people in the space, we recognized there was a lot of appetite for what we were doing, a lot of energy around what we were doing. Um, so we decided to launch a commercial product and we, we sold the RTO. Um, we're 100% Australian owned, 100% Australian developed, 100% Australian supported, um, all domestically on the Gold Coast. Um, and we provide this unique solution that's, that's committed to the vet space. Um, essentially, what we aim to do is provide the best experience we possibly can. And we do this by continuing to invest in the product and making the product as strong and, and aligned as possible to the vet sector and backing that up with the best service we can. Um, in terms of what we do, we're a solution that supports online training and assessment. And, and we, walk, we work with a broad range of RTOs, you know, ranging from boutique, uh, niche RTOs that provide a very narrow scope or, or very unique focus through to very um, large enterprise RTOs, whether that's, you know, um, retail or hospitality organizations like McDonald's or, or government organizations like some of the rail operators or, or some of the uh, emergency services operators. So we cover a broad scope of different RTOs and, and that's basically a function of covering the vet space. Um, essentially, we help our clients connect to their learners remotely. Um, but what we always try and reinforce is 
the value of digital assessment or online assessment isn't just that remote connection piece, which we've been focusing a bit more on in recent weeks, but there's a lot of efficiency and compliance benefits that tie together with the, the fact you operate in a digital solution, um, whether that's the efficiency of avoiding paper or, or just controls and, and, and protocol that you can put in place that you can't have in a paper-based um, system. Um, there's a lot of benefits beyond just that to remote transaction. Um, so essentially, although we help our customers connect to their learners remotely, it's, it's also, our solution is also about enabling them to facilitate pretty much any type of assessment, whether it's um, not just the knowledge assessments, but practicals, um, RPL uh, portfolios, log books, training record books, third party reports, all sorts of things. And, and again, that's a function of uh, our focus in the VET space. Um, in terms of, um, obviously, I mean, in, in terms of what Cloud Assess is, you can have courses of learners that are working towards a qualification and, and you issue them work and manage them through a process. Um, but unlike most generic higher ed kind of products, we, we provide these unique kind of features and capabilities such as, um, as I say, being able to digitize pretty much any type of paper assessment. Um, you can take advantage of a, a broad range of different submission workflows that just change the, the process that an assessment might go through, such as a logbook might be treated in a different way as an RPL record, et cetera. Um, you've got full management capabilities and visibility of every attempt that a learner takes on a different assessment, and you can see a digital timeline of those records. Um, we've got revision control practices that you won't see anywhere else that enable you to control and see all the records you put through different revisions, but also swap out different records very easily. Um, we've got mapping and analyses capabilities that you won't see anywhere else, not just checking that your, your tools cover all the requirements that they need, but you can also analyze submissions. So for example, in RPL submission, you can analyze and do a gap analysis on where key points or requirements might have been missed. So you can make a judgment call or create a training plan very easily off in contrast to a paper process that would obviously take you a long time. Um, we've got quality management practices enabling you to put sample rates or, or, or automated quality alerts in place to, to let you know if there's a problem with an assessment potentially. Um, and then we've got a form solution um, which enables you to do surveys and online enrollment and, and you can embed forms in your website again eliminating paper um, streamlining processes and getting efficiency and then the the final piece or, or one of the big other pieces is the fact that we've got these off-the-shelf integrations with uh, the ready tech products um, and that's just enabling that seamless um, transfer of information and, and that connectivity and efficiency of process so as results as results occur in Cloud Assess, they're transferred live and immediately to uh, to uh, your student management system. Um, like any progressive system, you know we're continuously evolving the product and and what we do. So, in light of the current situation, we've kind of rearranged our roadmap and focused on delivering some some new capabilities that are really going to help. Um, the, the RTOs we're working with connect with the learners in different ways. So we've recently um, enhanced the range of courseware and, and the type of media that you can share through the, uh, the resource library associated with a course for a learner. Um, we've also focused on, or, or just released in fact, a, a new course feed, which is like a news feed or a Facebook feed for a course. So learners can collaborate, you can share Zoom links, you can share articles, posts, and, and people can have within the course can have some dialogue and, and share some thoughts on those different things. Um, and then we're working on a great new learner interface that's going to be uh, available in the next few weeks that's really going to enhance that learner experience and, and bring some of those elements together a bit nicer. So we're pretty excited about the space that's, uh, that's coming in the next few um, weeks and months. You just flick me over onto it. Thanks, Al. Um, in terms of service and support, um, we really, when we set about creating Cloud Assess, we really wanted to break the mold in terms of service and support and, and how we support clients. Um, you know, I suppose it stemmed from frustrations we had from using solutions and you'd log a support ticket and you wouldn't hear anything for a day or, or a couple of days or what have you. So in terms of our team and, and the domestic capabilities, our support team 
um, over the last 12 months um, provide a, a non-automated personal response as quickly as they possible as quickly as they possibly can so our our team is measured in seconds on that kpi rather than minutes or hours so in the last 12 months the median time for our first response to issues raised was actually 39 seconds and, and that's a function of knowing that if you're in a classroom um, or you know you you've got a problem and you need to be productive um, you can't wait the next day for a response you need an answer to a question now whether that's how to follow a process or whether there's a, a technical issue that you're not quite understanding how something's working. Um, and, and that's really a function to keep people productive. Um, beyond that, you know, we're just back a second, sorry, Al. Beyond that, we're, uh, we're an Australian solution. So we're, we're hosted in Australia and we've got government grade infrastructure. You know, we've been through all sorts of checks and balances to facilitate government clients. So we've been through the checks and balances that we're, we're keeping data safe. Everything's stored in ISO 27001 locations. Um, it's domestic, so you, you, um, your sovereignty of your records is safe. Um, and, and we, again, invest heavily in, in providing a really strong infrastructure. And that's really with a view to keeping the best in class over time. So we're, we're scoring above 99.99% .99 in terms of our time. Next slide, please, Al. Okay, where are we? So in terms of value, and I've skimmed across some of it already, there's the, the engagement piece so you can collaborate, connect with, the, with your learners in a remote basis. And, and something we're seeing at the moment is the fact that uh, based on the current context and the way people are operating, um, you know, they're needing to, to quickly evolve and change how they're doing assessment or how they're engaging with um, different people in their workforce to gather evidence so one great example we've seen in the last few weeks is you know because trainers and assessors can't get out to site um, we're seeing third parties and supervisors being given a more active role in, in supporting the gathering of evidence in the workplace um, so so with the the different roles that we offer and the different uh, flexibility of, of the solution um, there's really a lot of options to kind of pivot and evolve and change how you're doing um, there's always been a big efficiency piece with, um, with digital assessment. Um, and I think although we, we speak to less companies these days that are still on paper, um, there's still a lot of companies that are using paper. And just the fact that you're having to print, collate, you know, move that paper around, distribute the paper, um, issue it to learners, get that paper back, um, actually check it over, make sure there's nothing missing, you know, upload your results, all these different steps that are involved as a function of having a paper system that can just be taken away if you've got a digital solution. Um, and if you've got a fit for purpose digital, digital solution like ours that connects through an integration and drives the result through to the end, you've really got a seamless process that you can, you can really transform your business. Um, so Al will show us some of the, the magic in terms of the um, digital capabilities that you'll see. The last piece really is, is about compliance and, and, and with, again, with a digital solution, you know, you've got a, a hard and fast link to be able to map content. You, you've got analyses capabilities that just aren't there in paper, whether it's, you know, continuous improvements requirements or even just managing quality and, and you know, mandating required fields, for example, on an assessment. So you're, you're never missing dates, you're never missing signatures, you're making sure every response has been answered or what have you it's just a range of different things that all contribute towards a, a great value proposition so so i'll just hand over to alex now he's gonna um, take 10 minutes just to show you through some of the product and, and help you understand what that does and, and and kind of get across some of that content and then we'll cover some of the integration and uh, hopefully we'll have time for some questions and answers so thanks very much everyone and we'll uh, keep it moving al over to you Thank you very much, Rob, and thanks, Nick, for the introduction there. So, as Rob uh, just mentioned, I'm going to uh, step you through uh, the platform, give you a nice overview to what sort of Cloud Assess is all about, how we can interact, how we can engage with the platform on a very, very sort of top level. I won't have too much time to sort of deep dive the intricacies of the platform, but we will be uh, mentioning it after uh, the, uh, the presentation, how you can get in touch should you wish us to uh, sort of step you through in a lot more detail. 
With regards to the platform, I've just got a couple of user views up on the screen there. So on the right hand side, I'm actually looking at uh, the Cloud Assess dashboard from a learner's perspective. And the learner's perspective, the dashboard is a call to action, very clean, very simple terminology that's very easy to, uh, to adopt. Uh, the platform is what we call a web app. So uh, it's optimized on all the devices. If a student's using a smartphone or tablet device or a desktop computer, as you can see on the left-hand side, we've got uh, some access here within an assessment as well. So we'll step through some of the different response areas in the assessment. We'll have a look around, get a bit of a flavor for the power in this. Essentially, your assessment tools are completely to your design and requirements. So you can really highly style and present them. You can uh, represent your existing content. And there doesn't need to be a compromise in the field types you use and the questions that students are going to interact with and engage with. So we'll step through what we've mocked up here, a bit of a very simple question bank to show you some different response areas. Now, from the learner's perspective, we can very quickly provide the answer in here. If I'm uh, from a text response, if we're working on a, uh, a mobile device, I can use the voice to text as well to speak those answers, it'll populate. If I'm not too comfortable with a query keyboard. In the design that we've mocked up, we've provided the ability for assessors or trainers to provide comments and feedback after questions, marking outcomes, you name it. We've got different question types where you can have multiple choice questions that can be auto marked. They can be presented in a multitude of different ways. And again, comments and feedback for the trainer and assessor. Moving into the trainer and assessor side of things, we can actually provide model answers benchmarking that's only visible to the assessor all the way through the assessment. So they're simply the same tool with different visibility and trainers can be given the opportunity to provide really nice, robust compliance sort of uh, feedback to that as well. Some of the question types get really nice and engaging. So we've got a sketch pad here where the learner might be asked to draw floor plans, diagrams, signage, and just using their mouse and cursor uh, or their finger on a touch screen, they can draw you fantastic drawings. So I'll do my uh, uh, signature stick man. Uh, you can apply color through these drawings, you name it, uh, and it can be very nice ways of removing paper. Seen these used for sketching down notes, that sort of requirement within the assessment as well. We take the sketch pad a bit further. You can embed background images on the sketch pad. In this example, the learners have to highlight the PPE concerns for the worker, and we can simply circle them. You may go one step further again, have a list of words on the background that the candidate, candidate has got to draw lines to identify equipment. So in this instance, we can say safety hat, gloves, you name it. Uh, very simple ways of producing this from your content. Uh, we're not talking about building e-learning from scratch and rushing to do that. We're using your documentation, your Word docs, your PDF, and bringing it into a really nice engaging assessment process. Different ideas such as tables, partially complete tables where the learner can type in answers to answer the question. Within those tables, you can embed date pickers with today's date, highlighted check boxes, you name it. Uh, a whole variety of different sort of uh, presentation styles. Evidence gathering within the assessment, so we can upload photo, video, audio very, very quickly, very intuitively and uh, get loads of great information. It could be a photograph, a video, audio conversation, document submissions, drop down list. We can also embed different types of learning and presentation throughout the assessment. So we can embed images as part of questions. We can embed video where we've got video. The student can consume that video as they work through their assessment rather than traditionally going off to a, sort of a resource uh, section outside of the assessment. This is right where the student needs it, right where they'd expect it. Watch the video, answer some questions in, the, in, in that regard. You can embed PowerPoint presentations, slideshows in exactly the same sort of fashion. If you do uh, own or use or have produced some advanced sort of e-learning content as well, it can simply be added into Cloud Assess as HTML content embedded within the assessment. So within the assessment, we can interact and engage with very nice, robust e-learns as well. Maybe if this is part of your learning journey or your knowledge checks, your self checks, they can be embedded and provided to your learners within the platform uh, at the same time. Moving on to different sort of assessment methods, we've got the observation checks. So observation checks, practical assessment, 
rather than being student led, these might traditionally be led by a trainer and assessor out in the workplace, on the job site, you name it. So in this instance here, we've got an observation check that's totally to your design, truly representative of your materials. And when, when we say that you build your own assessment in the platform, drag and dropping fields in, replicating your content to your requirement without restriction. So the assessor might be on site, they might be working on a mobile phone, uh, on a tablet device, completing observation checks. To your presentation here, you might have yes, no, witness, not witness, satisfactory, not satisfactory. We've gone with a very simple sort of uh, traditional checklist. They can be providing uh, marking guides, suggested answers, scenarios, questions to ask, gather evidence as they go, confirm evidence as they go, provide comments and feedback as they go. There's no sort of uh, restriction to what you include and make marking outcomes all the way through. Your assessment, as Rob's mentioned, can be mapped. So we've got complete mapping to one or more units of competency. Your assessment instrument here at the assessment level, we're showing you we can map right down to the question level. So question one in this instance supports the element one, you name it. That mapping is drawn from training.gov. You can see the release numbers, ensuring you're mapped to the latest releases. It's a very, very nice, clean way of controlling all that content. The dashboards themselves, very clean sort of overview. We're looking now at an administration sort of dashboard. We can clearly see student engagement. We can see our quality checks to complete and uh, a very, very functional sort of calls to action to ensure things are getting done on time every time. Uh, and again, a lot of automation with your workflows that are driving that process. We're going to move back into uh, the slides for a second or two, and we're gonna have a look at the integration. So I'm gonna talk you through the integration, and then I'm gonna jump back into Cloud Assess to show you how that's facilitated in the platform. Our integration, as Robert said, we integrate to uh, the ReadyTech products themselves. Uh, we've had integration with Vetrack for a good number of years, as Nick's alluded. Uh, it's a really robust integration. Uh, that gives gr uh, great efficiency and uh, is a pleasure to work with. We see integration as a standard uh, part of our offering. So with the integration, you uh, simply integrate your platform. It can be self-facilitated, something we support you with through, uh, through your implementation and very simple to configure. It is highly configurable in the fact that you can have different requirements and different processes with the integration, uh, but essentially, we can, uh, we can have it to replicate your process. We also have the ability of configuring unit outcomes and the information that we push back from the unit resulting level can include updating your vet miss codes in your student management system, commencement completion dates, you name it for those units as well, and full error logging there to identify if you've got any questions or queries or concerns there. Moving in, to how the integration works. So essentially there's some requirements to control what is shared between the two platforms. So we've got, first off, we, we tell or inform Cloud Assess, we create the qualifications, the units of competency we wish, uh, wish to deliver through Cloud Assess. We then associate and design our assessments to those units of competency and they're driven to your learners through enrollment. That enrollment, the course structures, the class setups, the occurrences are drawn from VetTrack along with the enrollment itself and the user's profile for you to simply deliver your training and assessment in Cloud Assess and results can return uh, straight to the student management system once you've resulted. So essentially we create and connect courses from your student management system. That then allows us to create those enrollments automatically and all our assigned assessment requirements all the content that we have associated for those learners and their enrollment is driven within cloud assess the uh, the enrollments through the courses that we shared go through a cycle and will update uh, to keep everything on track uh, and we can set uh, that frequency can also be a process that's managed by yourself we train and assess, award the unit outcomes, award those competencies, 
and we've got a live push of that results data going back in uh, to your student management system there as well. Uh, you can uh, put in, in place a bit of a quality review and the trigger of a successful outcome at quality review can update those results for you as well. So uh, lots of ways to sort of uh, control and manage that process. I'm gonna pop into, uh, into the platform and we'll have a quick look at what that looks like. Let me just exit out of those. There we go. So in the platform, how we access and uh, control integration, it's very simple. From our course uh, menu, we can select to integrate. Selecting to integrate, we've got the option to pull courses, pull enrollments for courses that we've already set up, and selecting to pull courses. We'll see the available courses in this instance, we're sharing both of them with the platform. We can pull those courses in if they don't already exist in CloudSS, and then pull enrollments for those courses, allowing you to search and filter by date, you name it, and uh, have a really nice, seamless, and aligned solution there. Okay, so we'll move into how we move forward. Rob, do you want me to continue with this one? Things that might be on mute. Yeah, sorry, mate. Um, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll I'll do this one. Thanks, Al. That's great. Um, no worries. As we said, it's a bit of a bit of a whistle stop tour, half an hour. So um, hopefully that gives people a bit of a bit of a flavour for what we're about. Yeah, at the moment, yeah, everyone's interested on getting online quickly. Um, so so we can get um, trial accounts set up very quickly. Um, we're offering extended trials at the moment so people can really get to grips with things quickly uh, and get as much value out of that process as possible. Um, we've got rapid onboarding support at the moment. So um, I think um, in the recent weeks, we've had clients start from sign up to, uh, to enrolling live students within a week or two. Um, it really comes down to getting those resources into the solution as quick as you can and, and we can support that process as much or as little as required. And we've got a, an implementation process that we've developed over the years we've been going. Um, and that's a pretty rigorous four phase process that we support you through, whether that's understanding your business and, and helping to configure the platform to suit, um, getting your content in and supporting you through a digitization phase, you know, getting your staff on board, training people and uh, getting ready to go live and, and, and testing everything. And then the big launch. So um, there's a pretty, rigorous process there that uh, that we've developed over the years that can really support people to get moving nice and quickly. Um, I suppose the last slide is, yeah, if you want to find out more, um, there's a there's a link. We've got a website, cloudassess.com.au, as you'd expect, but please go and have a, a look at the link there and you can uh, request a trial. Um, we can take you through the product, set up a trial for you. Or have a look on the, the website. There's loads of information about the products. The, the blog's got a lot of good information in. And, and yeah, just get in touch and, uh, and we'll be happy to facilitate. Um, I guess we'll, uh, we'll get over to the questions, Al. Um, I'll throw the first one at you, Al. Um, Jenny Bolton has asked, um, what if a student makes a genuine mistake and wants to change their answer? Now, I know we've got a few different ways we can do that. Um, do you want to kind of highlight a couple of ways we can do that or support different processes there, Al? Yeah, abs absolutely, Rob. So uh, students can modify, update their responses right up until the point of the final submission of that assessment item. So like they would on paper, as they work through the questions, uh, if they can review it at any time, they can save the assessment, come back to uh, that assessment at any time, you name it. So lots of flexibility. The assessment actually saves auto saves. The students step through sections, it saves periodically to really protect uh, a nice robust assessment process and give you, you know, a great usability. But students can absolutely move back and forward through the questions, uh, through the different sections that you, you've designed, interact and engage with the responses they've already given, update them right up until that last point of final submission. So if we've got you know, a, a knowledge-based assessment or a theory assessment that's got 40 questions in there, 50 questions in there. I've completed those. I've reviewed them. I've uh, you know, consumed all the learning elements prior to this. And I'm then asked if I wish to finally submit the assessment. When I finally submit the assessment, 
I can only do so when I've completed all the required responses. So we will prevent the student submitting work if they haven't signed it, uh, if there's a requirement to say, sign an authenticity a statement or declaration, we will prevent them if they haven't answered all the questions that you've said are a requirement. They'll get taken back to those requirements, complete them. Submitting their assessment, they get a notification asking them to confirm, and it does at that point inform them that they won't be able to continue to update the assessment should they submit for marking. So again, supporting that robust process, students obviously won't be able to update or manipulate their responses within the assessment while the trainer and assessor results at the marking stage. But yeah, lots of different flexibility. Traditional learning management systems, you move forward from a question, you can't go back, you can't modify or anything like that. It's truly seamless, like they would be working on paper, just in a much more uh, sort of efficient medium. And if that I can add to that, really, really, once you've submitted an attempt, we keep all the attempt history. So if they made a mistake on one question, you could issue them a new attempt and you can either issue a duplicate attempt that retains all the responses or you can issue them a blank attempt. So you'd issue them a duplicate attempt. They could modify the response for that question and you've got the, the, all the attempt history retained there so you can see all the information about those different attempts as they go through the process. Um, under unusual circumstances, you may take the option to unlock the record but there's very few people in your organization with that control for very good reason um, so we'd always recommend that you just do another attempt in that process okay have we got any other questions that anyone would like to ask at this point stunning silence well we'll just say thanks again thanks nick um, anytime Good to see you. Um, thanks to the ReadyTech group. Thanks everyone for coming in, uh, having a look what it's all about. Um, best of luck with uh, getting through the next uh, period of time, however long that's going to be. And uh, yeah, we'll see you all soon or on the other side. And yeah, if you've got any questions, please don't hesitate to get in touch and we'll uh, glad to support you. Have a great day, everyone. We'll, uh, we'll catch you soon. Thanks very much for your time, folks. Appreciate it.